Welcome to the Welsh Woodman Workshop and in tonight's project we're going to be using this reclaimed pallet board and wood turning a load of pens. So there's some amazing videos already out there on YouTube about pen turning so I'm just going to talk through a few of my processes and hopefully you'll pick up some good tips and tricks along the way. And just to show that you can make pens out of pretty much anything we're going to be using this pallet board. So I hope you enjoy. So before we start cutting, drilling and turning I thought I'd show you what sort of pen we're going to be getting at the end of this. So I've chosen to go with a slimline pen kit as this video is based at beginners or people starting out in pen turning and this tends to be the most common one that you'll start off with. So you get a pen refill as a part of the kit and you can replace those if the ink does run out. We get two brass tubes that are seven millimeters in diameter and I'll explain the importance of these more later on. We get then an end cap that goes on the end, which holds everything into place. A little clip then, so we can you can clip that onto your shirt or, or things like that. We get a nib cap at the front there. Get a transition sort of piece there in the middle between the two, which suits the twist mechanism quite nicely. So this piece will go inside the brass tubes, and as we twist the pen then, the nib comes out and you can retract it then by twisting it the other way. So we're going to make a kit very much similar to this. We're going to need two blocks that we're going to need to cut out and drill some holes so these little brass tubes can get glued in there and mounted onto the lathe. So I'm going to show you all my sort of processes of how we get to this sort of stage. So the first step I'm going to use an old fashioned sort of plane to plane a nice straight edge so we can then run them on the table saw. So pretty lucky there, it looks like we've got a bit of beach coming through, so we're just going to use this square edge now against the fence of our table saw to cut those square blanks out. So I'm just going to set the fence to the thickness of the material, clamp them down and then we'll be able to run this through. So I'm just bring the blade a tiny tiny bit above the, uh, the material, we're going to put our ear and eye protection on. Now we've got these three long lengths, we get lots of pens out of these. Now if you didn't have a table saw, you could quite easily use a panel saw and I've used this in the past to do exactly the same sort of thing. So the next step in the making process, we're going to need to cut off a block of the beach to the same length as our brass tube. Now an easy way of doing this, put your brass tube right at the end of the block, make sure the end's square to begin with. Little mark, try square then or a 90 degree line across the work. We can then use a mini little bench hook I've got here and if you're trying to grain match, trying to get the grain as sort of consistently flowing through the best you can, you can use a saw with a, a thin kerf. This is my Japanese saw, I use my dovetail joints. Just want to line it up with the line. So I'm going to do quite a few of these out of this length and I'm going to show you a quicker way of doing that if you're not too concerned about the grain matching perfectly as the pen twists. So a quicker way to saw these out if you want a load of lengths is to use the compound miter saw. Now I'm going to use this as a setup piece for the blade. I should be able to rip a load of these through. Get some goggles in. Another good tip, as you're cutting these out, you're going to get loads and loads of blocks uh, accumulating. Now I like to keep mine together as pairs, uh, so what I do to help me with that is I put a little witness line across the, the top there and I'll let to match them, so A, A. Uh, when I come to, after drilling all the holes and things, I can make sure I can find the right pair and put them on the, the lathe together and you just get a, a more consistent looking pen that way. I've got them all cut out and labelled up and we managed to get nine out of just that one strip, so we've got another two more strips to go as well. Now it's going to save yourself a lot of money if you make your own uh, blanks rather than buying like a, a one pound blank a time as you can sometimes see on eBay and things like that. But what we're going to do next is mark out the centres then get them ready to drill. So this can sometimes be the time consuming bit because you want to mark the centres on either side. I'll show you two ways of doing this. Uh, one way is to use your finger as a gauge and you can score on all four sides and where all those lines meet in the middle that's going to be the centre. 
that's quite quick to do. If you're not that great at doing that as a technique, you can make yourself up a little jig. This is just simply a 45 degree angle cutting in there with a bit of plywood then just strip over the top. And I've used this for absolute years. There's no need to, to buy a fancy jig. And you can use larger versions of these to make a center finder for your bowl blanks and things like that. Uh, you just want to do it on all four sides. Then you find the exact center then where all of these cross all of these cross over. Over at the pillar drill and I've got my work in the vise. I mark the centers, gonna line up the drill bit, which is a seven millimeter drill bit matching up to the brass tube right in the center of that. And I've got some woodworking drill bits, so they've got these little points on the end, which make them very good to line up nice and accurately. I'm gonna turn it on and we're gonna drill all the way through. Now this is an Aldi pillar drill, so it's not the the best pillar drill in the world, but it does the job. So I found that if you go upwards and downwards, rather than trying to drill through in the whole lot in one go, you get a far more accurate hole that's been drilled. And another easy thing I've found as well, turn the drill bit off, rather than extending your throat too much, you can put a, a shim piece underneath, increase the height of this, rather than pulling the, the, the drill throat all the way down to the bottom, which is going to increase your accuracy slightly, so that it's not going to vibrate as much. Well, <laughs> in this drill's case anyway. So I've got it all the way through, turn them off, we can check then, and we can see that we're getting a, a hole that's been centred as well through the other side. So we've got a lot of drilling to do, we're going to do all of these in one go, then we can start get gluing. I've got a little tool or a little jig I've made up that the brass tubes fit over, so it holds it, it's got like a taper turn on it, holds it in place, and I use a bit of rough sandpaper, so 80 sort of grit sandpaper. And uh, what I use that to do is rough up the surfaces because it's a nice smooth surface at the moment. The glue, the CA glue or super glue that we're going to be using is going to want a bit of a textured surface to glue better with. So I do that for all the pieces. I do that as one batch because it's quicker to batch your processes together. So the gluing process, this can sometimes be the messy bit, but I found by using this little handle thing again, Put a little bit of stick wax on there, so if the the um, super glue does tend to stick to this, it'll stick to the wax, it'll peel off. So I put the tube over the top, and I'm going to be using some Poundland, or if you're in America, the dollar store uh, super glue. I found it works exactly the same as the high price super glue, except the shelf life. As soon as you open it, you have to pretty much use it all in one go. And because we're doing quite a lot of these, that's not a problem. So we're going to peel it out, spread it out. And you want to be wearing gloves for this bit, definitely. I find this is the messiest bit. And uh, without gloves, it's horrible stuff <laughs> sticking to your hands and other things. So we've got a tiny bit of glue on there. We're going to just rotate the blank as it goes on. And that's going to spread the glue throughout the entire piece. I just use a little knife then on that wax part to shim that off and that'll be stuck in there then uh, you can use some activator if you, you wanted to speed things up but I just tend to leave mine overnight and that does the job and they're, they're solid it works just as good as the sort of more expensive CA glues in my opinion I haven't, well I haven't noticed any difference anyway so it's going to do that for all the blanks we've got all our blanks glued up at one point and then we can get turning. The next step then, we've got all the glue that's dried and we're gonna to need to just trim the ends to make sure they're absolutely flat and flush and make sure that the barrels are all clean, ready out. So we're gonna be using something called a barrel trim and we've got like this, almost like a reamer end on the, the edge of that and these then make a nice flat surface, how, how it works, then we put it through the tube. Safer to do this in the pillar drill. But just to speed it up for the camera, I'm using my hand drill. You can see there you've got a nice flat edge. Now what this is going to do is it's going to sit nice and flat against the bushings of our pen mandrel. I'll explain what that means in a second. The piece is going to be mounted on what's known as a pen mandrel, which is this. This happens to be a router brand. And you can see on there we've got something called bushes. 
and these bushes then you can buy them in different sizes and they relate to the diameter size of that little brass tube so these are slimline brushes brushes these little seven millimeter ones so those are the, the three we're going to be using today and you can get larger ones with little chamfered edges to fit larger sort of pen blanks then as well a little suggestion if you're going to be using a mandrel turn yourself a little tiny bowl that you can use to collect all of the uh, the bushes and things as you're taking them off and have a good sweep beforehand as if you lose especially the brass piece in the shavings it's an absolute nightmare <laughs> to try and find so those are the bushes we don't need today these are the ones we do so putting our parts onto the mandrel then we want the first bush on there and we've got our wooden piece then you can see the importance of that barrel trim to get a nice flat edge put them on then we want another bushing in between the middle and we want our last piece we want to try and get where we put our markings to line up to match each other on the top of there then we can put our last bushing on now what we want to do is we want to adjust the length of the bar so that this last bushing is just a little bit onto the threads and the way we do that is using an allen key to adjust the bar and we just want to push that in slightly so that the end bushing is a little bit over those threads we can tighten up that allen key then give it a push to make sure it's securely in place and the next step we're just going to put the end cap over so we thread it on and in most kits they'll come with a, a knurled end so it makes it easier to grip or they'll even have a almost like a little tommy bar you can put in there and tighten it down with so in order to sort of make sure that doesn't vibrate loose we've got a little nut then that goes on the end and that acts like a, a locking nut essentially all together that's good so we can then put this into the most tape part of the headstock into place and we can bring up the tailstock for support so we can see it's all securely put into place and the great thing about pen turning is that you really don't need that many tools so I'm going to do all my turning just with this sort of spindle gauge so I've got a traditional sort of grind on there and I can get all the shaping done with just that one tool so before I turn them on I'm making sure I've got full and free movement of the piece so it's not touching the tool rest making sure everything's nice and locked down and then we're good to go so step number one we're just going to rough this out into the round now a little good tip with the end we never want to be working outwards to in because you could peel off along the grain so ideally you want to be working inwards to out you're not going to catch then an edge and tear it off which will obviously affect the piece we get these corners done quick and we rough out in between to so get these into the round quick and I'm trying to look with my eyes across the top of that piece so that's going to give me my profile So just going to have a look, oh lovely, we've got a little, little bit of a knot in there, look, nice bit of character. And what I tend to do before I even start thinking about sanding and as I make sure 100% I'm happy with that shape. Now on my slimline pens, what I tend to do is a little bit of a flare there where you, you're going to be writing with it. And I found that that sort of shape sells well and it's more comfortable for people to use. And I found that the just a straight, simple, all 
the same size all along. They didn't tend to sell as well at market stores and things. So a little bit of a flair in there just to add to the aesthetics and the sort of function of the piece goes a long way. So what we're going to do then, quite happy with that shape, we're going to sand with just some hand sandpaper. We're going to go up the grits then. And what we're going to do to make sure we get a nice silky smooth finish on this is stop in between each grit and sand in the direction of the grain. And that'll give you a, an overall lovely smooth finish. When we come to sanding, I find it's just easier to sand from underneath. You use a little bit of wood shavings in the paper. That's going to take out a lot of the heat and pad it as well. So there's a lot of debate as to what speed you should sand on. If you want to get things done fast, I think the higher speed works. But some people recommend turning your lathe speed down so the grit of the sandpaper works better. So you'll sort of know when you finish sanding because you'll have no lines or scratches in your work across the entire piece. Now we're going to get round to finishing next. So the finishing process is pretty easy. We're going to put a cellulose sanding sealer over the top to begin with. And what that will do is it'll just seal the grains of the wood. So just rub that in the direction of the grains. And I'm going to turn the machine on and add some more. And I'm going to use the, the paper towel then the friction of the paper towel to sort of burnish this into the grain so it naturally sort of cuts it back. A nice high speed, high as it will go. Next thing we're going to use is a wood tinner source diamond coat pen polish. Now this is pretty pricey for what it is but it's a brilliant product. Uh, it gives you a nice hardy finish. Uh, you get a little bit of a chemically sort of smell coming from it but I'd highly recommend this. Especially if you sand things up to a, a nice smooth grit. This will really help sort of Give it a protective coat and bring out the shine all in one. So rub that on as the lathe's off, blend it all in. So we can turn the, the lathe up then to get those blended in. And we get a nice shiny finish. I'll show you a little bit of a close up in a second. So this is a homemade pen jig I made a good few years ago and I borrowed the idea off uh, another YouTuber that has made a video on this so I'd highly recommend checking that out. So essentially I've got the different sizes I'm going to need all labelled out and we're going to start off with the nibs. You need to look at where it fits the hand the best, the pen, put the nib into place over the top of it and we're going to use the press just to help us push that into place. Now the way that these have been sort of engineered is to have like an interference type fit so as soon as they're in there they're, they're sort of stuck in there, a nice secure place. So we've got the, the nib there. Next thing we're going to put in is the twist mechanism. Now on these twist mechanisms, they've got this little line. What I tend to do is put that in there ready to go. And I'm just going to push up just before that line. So just creeping up to that little grooved line there and what I'm going to do first before I go any further is I'm going to screw in the pen mechanism and twist and that's just about right actually so it's there we go by going right up the line to begin with you can sometimes go too far and you'll have to pull out this piece but that seems to be working really well so the next piece I'm going to put on is that little sort of dividing ring put that over the top you can just slide that one on mostly and then the end cap piece and the great thing about this jig <laughs> not really for the fact it saves you lots of money is that you can adjust the sizes for different pen blanks uh, different pen kits and it's fully adjustable. So last step then we're going to put the little clip on there and the end cap over the top of the clip. Line him up. Push him into place. There we go. And we've got one completed slimline pen ready to go. Let's test him out. Oh another thing as well 
These won't work to begin with because they've got a, a blob of wax over the top of the tip. You just need to peel that off, then you've got a fully functioning pen. So I'd normally do this step all together, so I'd turn the, a load of them together, then press them together, as that saves a little bit of time. So as you can probably see, I turned out quite a few of these, because they're fun and easy to do, and I normally do about 10 at a time, so grouping those processes together is easier to batch these out rather than just making one, then another one at another point. So I've got them all displayed on a little pallet wood, so I'm keeping them with a the theme, pen holder, and I use this at my craft fairs then to display pens. And these are a superb Christmas present to give, and it's nice to think that they're functional so people will actually put them to good use. So I hope you enjoyed tonight's video and found it useful, especially if you're starting out in pen turning or you've never given it a go before. If you have enjoyed tonight's video, please consider subscribing to my channel by hitting the link below as that really helps me out in getting more videos like this your way. Give us a thumbs up and if you've got any comments down below that you could help out other wood turners with pen turning, please feel free to add those. Hope you have a great night. Dielkom var, nor stop.